Today, we're going to look at the top 10 best cards that you can use from the starter collection and from pool one that you can use in any deck when starting out in Marvel Snap. There's some real sleeper picks in there, so stay tuned. Let's go. Hey, hey, Milky here, back again with another video for Marvel Snap. Uh, today, we're looking at flex picks. These cards are what I think are the top 10 best flex picks and cards which are super versatile to fit into pretty much any deck you're going to build early on in Marvel Snap. These cards work really, really well on their own, independent of the deck, and you can flex them into decks when you don't have a full list of the deck you're trying to build. They can be a great card to fill a spot just like that. So for the first few days that you're playing Marvel Snap, you're going to be working your way through Pool 1. You'll start off with all of the Recruit cards and the Beginner cards very quickly, but then you'll be working your way slowly through Pool 1. You'll get all of these cards pretty quickly, but you won't have all of them from the start. So as you're working your way through Pool 1 and collecting all the cards, it's important to have flex picks, which you can sub into each deck for those cards that you don't have the perfect spot for. These top 10 cards are perfect for that. So let's go ahead and break down what I think are the best top 10 flex cards that you can put into any starter deck in Marvel Snap. I've also included some cool variants of the card we'll be showing, so check them out too. So first up in 10th place, we have Jessica Jones. She's a newly buffed card, which is a four cost, four power card, which has an on reveal effect that says, if you don't play a card here next turn, plus four power. She does telegraph your turn a little bit, especially if you're trying to get the full value out of the card, but four cost for eight power is really, really good in this game and can be a really strong push on the board. If you're looking for a versatile card to fill out that four drop on your curve, she could potentially be a really good inclusion in your deck. At number nine, we have what I think is an absolute sleeper pick in White Queen. She's a four cost, six power card, which has an on reveal effect, which is draw a copy of the highest cost card in your opponent's hand. White Queen has solid power stats as is, but her on reveal ability is absolutely insane in my opinion. White Queen allows you to draw a copy of the highest cost card in your opponent's hand. You're often playing White Queen on turn four, which gives you key information of how your opponent's final turns might look. Having information about your opponent's deck and more importantly, what's in their hand is huge in Marvel Snap and shouldn't be underrated. She gives you real insight into the potential final turns that your opponent might make. Not only that, but she gives you a copy of that card from your opponent's hand. If your opponent has a high cost card, which is an incredible play on the board, you get a copy of that and you can play that on the board on your final turns too. White Queen, in my opinion, is super underrated and I would definitely recommend trying her out if you're looking to get information on your opponent's hand while also having a really strong card at four drop. Coming in at number eight, we have Gamora. And Gamora is another card which got a recent buff. The buff took her to a five cost, seven power card, which has an on reveal effect if your opponent played a card here this turn, plus five power. She potentially represents 12 power on the board for five cost. That's huge in Marvel Snap. There are other Guardians of the Galaxy like Star-Lord, Rocket Raccoon, and Drax, which have very similar effects to Gamora, albeit at different power levels. Often late in the game, you have a much better idea of where your opponent is going to play on the board. They also have more energy to play more cards, so you have a better chance of reading where they're going to play and get the most out of her on-reveal effect. If you're able to activate Gamora's on-reveal ability and lock her in at 12 power on the board, that is a huge presence on turn 5. She's definitely worth considering playing if you're looking for a card which you can have a big power push in a single lane late on in the game. At number 7, we have Bishop. Bishop recently got a nerf, taking him down 1 power from 2 power. Now he sits at 1 power. But I think he's still a really strong card. The reason I think he's still strong is because early on in the game, lots of the decks are made up with low-cost cards, which means you're going to be playing a lot of them out on the board. If you can get an early bishop out, meaning on turn three, you can make the most of building up power on him and potentially get him to a eight power, nine power, maybe even higher throughout the rest of the game. Bishop's also one of those cards you can drop into a location which might lock down. 
Something like the kiln, for example. If you have bishop in the kiln, but you're continually able to add power to him later on in the game, that can always go in your advantage and is something to consider when playing him as well. All in all, I think the nerf hit bishop a little bit, but I think he's still a really strong card in a lot of decks, especially early on in the game. He's a card that you're almost always gonna get value out of if you can play him early and you have a low cost deck. If that's the type of deck you're playing, consider playing bishop, he's a great card to include. Coming in at number six is Enchantress. Enchantress is an incredibly strong counter card in the game. Early on in the game, so many people play ongoing decks. Whether it's Ant-Man, Captain America, Spectrum ongoing decks, or something to do with Onslaught and Iron Man, a well-played Enchantress can shut that down immediately. You can cancel all the ongoing effects at a single location, making a Spectrum play useless for that location. You can completely shut down an Iron Man or an Onslaught location if you play it well enough. Four power on the board, that's also not too shabby, but her on reveal effect is so powerful that makes her my number six pick. And I think she is a great inclusion if you find that you're versing a lot of ongoing decks early on in the game. Breaking into our top five and at number five, we have Blue Marvel. And if you've already seen some of my other videos, you'd know that I'm a Blue Marvel believer. Blue Marvel's recent buff has brought him to a five cost, three power with an ongoing ability. Your other cards have one plus power. In my opinion, Blue Marvel's real strength is that his ongoing ability is unconditional, meaning that the boost that he applies to other cards isn't conditional on the other cards whatsoever. He just applies a one plus power to all the other cards that you have on the board, regardless of what they are. There's other cards in the game like Kazar or Cerebro later on, or even Patriot you'll find out in pool three, but these cards have conditions on the buffs they provide. Their buffs might be more, but there's conditions on the buffs they provide, which means you have to really build a deck around them to succeed. Blue Marvel, you can slam in any deck and get the value out of him. As long as you've got a number of cards out on the board that can be buffed, Blue Marvel can be a great inclusion at five drop if you're looking to fill out the curve and boost the other cards up you've got on the board. I might be a little bit biased, but I think Blue Marvel is a great inclusion in a lot of decks. Not only can he bring a really large total power to the board, but that total is also spread across a lot of locations and it can be a really surprising amount of power pushing onto the board late on in the game. Obviously, Blue Marvel is best partnered with cards like Onslaught, but I think he has a spot in some decks where you're looking to fill out curves as well. Coming in at number four and a card that I am another big believer of is Ant-Man. At face value, Ant-Man looks very average with one cost and one power, but I think his ongoing ability is very versatile in a lot of decks that you're gonna play. As I said earlier, lots of pool one and starter decks often have low curves, meaning you're playing a lot of cards on the board. Ant-Man can really take advantage of that, uh, adding three power to himself once a location is filled with cards. One cost, four power in Marvel Snap is huge, and he's a really good card to build out a location as you want to continue playing in there. He's also a card once on the board your opponent will have to think about trying to play around. Getting in your opponent's head, even in simple little ways like that, can mean a lot in Marvel Snap. So think about including Ant-Man in a deck if you're looking to have a really strong one cost card. At number three, we have a pick which might surprise some people, but I think he is an incredible card to include in a lot of decks, and that is Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler is a one cost, two power card, which has an ability that says you can move this once. Early on in the game of Marvel Snap, there are very limited ways to move cards into some locations. There are locations like Luke's Bar, Sanctum Sanctorum, Death's Domain, the Kiln after turn four, the Vault after turn five, all these locations can potentially lock you out of playing cards into them. But then you've got Nightcrawler on the board and you can move him anywhere that you would like. The real strength of Nightcrawler is also you don't have to move him on any particular turn. You can play him on turn one, leave him on the board for the entire game, reveal all the other locations out there, and then move him when you want to. You can also play Nightcrawler into blind locations a bit more safely than other cards. It's not always necessary, but if you are wanting to play into an unflipped location, Nightcrawler can be a really good card to do that. Nightcrawler as a card is a perfect example of a flex pick in Marvel Snap. Something that's gonna allow you to get some sneaky power into locations that you might otherwise not be able to win. So why not try out Nightcrawler in some of your decks where you're looking to fill out that one drop spot? He can be a great way to get some power into locations where you otherwise wouldn't be able to. So now we get into the top two and coming in in the second spot is Iron Man. 
Iron Man is an insane card in this game. Not only in the beginner decks and pull one decks as you're first starting out, but he is a core component of a lot of decks late on in the game, even into pool three. Iron Man is the absolute king of locking down a single location. And if there is no Enchantress in your opponent's deck, there is very little they can do to stop what you're doing with Iron Man on a single location. You can play Iron Man on turn five to try and stop your opponent playing into a location and maybe manipulate their turns later on in the game. Or you can drop him on a final turn in order to blow away your opponent at that single location with a surprising amount of power that's really hard to account for. I'm sure you already have tried out Iron Man, but if you are looking for a flex pick and you're looking for a big push in a single lane, Iron Man is your absolute go-to, so check him out. Coming in in first place for me is Angela, and I have absolutely no idea why this card has not been nerfed. Angela is a two cost, one power card with an ability that says, when you play a card here, plus two power. In pool one, there are very few ways to counter Angela. So in almost all games, you're probably gonna get the max value out of her. Angela is an absolute powerhouse in so many types of decks. You can play her in low curve decks where you're playing out lots of cards. You can also just play her in decks which push a lot of power on the board laid on in the game. It's no secret that Angela is a very good card and I'm not too sure how much longer we're gonna have her in this current state. So play her now and try her out in your decks. I'm sure she'll be a great card for you to include. So that's it, that's all I got for you today. Those are the top 10 flex picks that you can have in the pool one and starter pool. If you're looking to fill out cards, if you don't have all the cards you want for a particular deck and you're looking to fill those slots, consider including one of these cards. All of these cards have the potential to do really, really well without needing a specific deck type to do so. They're very consistent in the way that they play and they can help you fill out a spot until you unlock the perfect card to replace them. So check them out. Play these cards in your decks if you have spots to fill. I'm really keen to hear what your flex picks are. So let me know in the comments if you've got any flavor picks or flex picks that you like to fill out the rest of your decks with. So that's a wrap on our top 10 beginner flex cards that you can put into pretty much any deck in Marvel Snap early on. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, all of that good stuff. And until the next one, I'll see you then.